That looks like a lot of carbon in there, doesn't it? In the previous videos, we tried to unstick the piston rings on this engine. We tried seafoam and Marvel Mystery Oil. With the seafoam, we tried the top-down approach through the spark plug holes and the bottom-up approach through the crankcase. And then we used the directions on the Marvel Mystery Oil and ran it for over 3,000 miles in the engine. So far, not much success, if any, but that's subject to opinion. Today, we're gonna try Motor Medic's Motor Flush. And on the container, it actually says it also frees sticking valves and rings. Let's get started. I guess the first thing I need to do is actually park the car where I'm gonna change the oil. I think I'll change it down there. Because once we get the motor flush in there, we can't really drive it. So the directions say check to make certain oil and crankcase is up to safe level. So it doesn't say drain any out, like drain a quart so you can add this quart in there. And it says add motor medic motor flush to cold engine before changing oil and filter. So that's what I'll do. I'll just pour this in there. I think I'm down about half a quart right now, but it's in between the dots. So I will just pour this whole thing in there and we will run it for what? idle engine at normal speed for five minutes. The main ingredients appear to be diesel fuel and kerosene. Definitely smells like kerosene. Now let's crank it and let it run for five minutes. The engine still sounds fairly normal, no knocking or clicking. Sounds exactly the same as it always does. Give it one or two more minutes just to make sure. You know, it does say here, note, extremely dirty engines may require repeat treatment. Let's just let it go a little bit long, just because, you know, we're talking about some seriously stuck rings here, I think. I mean, it couldn't really make it much worse, right?
just to be totally transparent about this test, I went ahead and ran it for an extra five minutes and I actually brought the RPMs up to just below 2000 RPM, right around 1500 for maybe a minute or two. So this test includes 10 minutes of motor flush running in the engine, about two of which it was run at just under 2000 RPM. Now I'm telling you this because the directions do not say to do that, but I want the experiment to be legitimate so that everything is documented and that's what I did. Incidentally, the engine did smoke at those higher RPMs, but that is not the first time. Anytime I would rev the engine for more than a minute or so, above 1500 RPM, it would smoke, whether it had any sort of oil additive or not. What's interesting about it is it doesn't smoke immediately when you bring it up to 1500. You have to keep it at 1500 for just a little while, and then it'll slowly start smoking more and more and more, which almost leads me to believe that it might be the catalytic converter getting hot and burning off some of the contaminants. So I don't know. If you know or think you know what it is, please go ahead and add that to the comments. Crank this, get this on level ground, and check the oil level. Now let's reset the tripometer. Now, as you saw, the oil was pretty clean to start with. Let's check it out now. I'll pour some in a little container so we can see what it looks like better. Actually, I'll scoop it with another one of these little nut containers like I used last time. Pretty watery. And pretty dark now, actually.
That looks like a lot of carbon in there, doesn't it? That's a little disappointing. So it appears the motor flush did not work. Just to go over what I did again, I added the motor flush to the engine. I let it idle for five minutes. Then I decided to get the best bang for my buck. I was gonna double the time. So I actually let it idle for 10 minutes. Two minutes of the second five minutes, I actually revved the engine to 2000 RPM. So when it's all told, it idled for eight minutes and revved at 2000 RPM for two minutes. Then I changed the oil. It still appears to be using about a quart in 300 and some miles. So it looks like we've had no impact on the oil use. There've been a lot of good recommendations from viewers out there. Several of you have mentioned to try engine restore and I would like to try that in the future. But since that is a compression increasing chemical, I guess you'd say, that puts some sort of a coating on the piston walls and doesn't necessarily clean the rings or free up the rings. I want to save that until last to see if that will actually make a difference. So first I'm going to try some other methods of cleaning the rings or freeing up the rings if I can find them. There have been lots of recommendations. Um, AMS oil flush. Uh, one guy mentioned a chemical that I find really interesting called shooter lube. And this is a solvent that dissolves carbon. It's supposed to be really powerful. And I found that really interesting. So in my next video, I'm gonna get some shooter lube solvent. It's a gun cleaning solvent, since guns produce a lot of carbon when you fire them. And it's designed to just dissolve that carbon away. So we're gonna take this shooter lube solvent and use the top down approach, just like we did in the first seafoam video. See if we can soak the pistons in this solvent and see if that will have an impact on the oil use by freeing up the rings. I also think that it's just the oil rings that are giving us problems because it does have good compression when the engine is warm, though it's still using a lot of oil. Maybe some of you can comment out there, you know, who actually know what's going on here, but it looks like it's all problems with the oil control rings, if it's a ring problem at all. So we're gonna go through all this, try out these chemicals, maybe try out the engine restore if none of the chemicals seem to work. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna move on to the valve stem seals because a lot of you have mentioned valve stem seals. And that's the first thing I thought of when I had oil use until I researched it. Because actually, usually when I buy a car, one of the first things I do is change the valve stem oil seals. But after researching this car and seeing the problems with the piston rings, I decided to start there. But after we use all these chemicals, if nothing seems to work, I'm going to change the valve stem seals and see if that makes a difference. And if that does not make a difference, we're probably gonna do a rebuild and re-ring it. Mm -hmm. 